latest webinar from ARD Consultancy with me, Andrew Dawkins, and myself, Rachel Blackhall. Oh, it's lovely to have you with us this fine morning, hopefully the start of spring. Oh, well, hopefully. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not been that way recently, but fingers crossed. Yeah. So anyway, on the webinar today, what are we planning to cover? Our agenda today, um, I will touch on what's been happening at ARD Consultancy and then handing over for a discussion with our special guest star, Caroline Miller, Head of North Distribution for oh, Standard no. Life. <laughs> oh, you wish. <laughs> then we'll hand the reins over to Andrew to discuss the world of investments and provide us with a market update. Uh, then we have a short video with the performance analysis of our ARD consultancy fund portfolios, and then rounding off with our usual question and answers. So. As always, if there's any questions that crop up or even any comments that you want to pass on, please just type them in the box as we go along and then we'll catch up with them at the end. Yeah, that's a good thing to do. So starting off then, what's been happening here? What's been happening? So we are finally delighted to advise that we have all of our staff now back working away. Um, to accommodate social distancing protocols, we have rented some office space at Glen Bervey Business Park. So myself and Stacey, are currently based there and um, we obviously still have the main office in Melville Street, Falkirk, where the rest of the team are mm. currently working from. Hopefully, uh, what's, it, what's it like in the Glenbury Business Centre? Well, it's all right. We don't have as many little home comforts as we do here, but we do have a coffee machine, so it makes things a little bit nicer. Yeah, table football? No, don't have anything like that. <sighs> Strictly work over there. Well, fancy <laughs> coffee machine? All work, no play. But hopefully we'll all be back together again. Um, well, fingers crossed this summer, but we'll have to wait and see what the Scottish Government say. And then what we thought we would do this month is a little bit of a meet the team. So I'm sure many of you all know who we are and recognise our faces. But for those newer clients who have maybe not had the chance to meet any of us face to face, we thought we would run through and put a face to a name and touch a little bit on what we all do. So... First of all, we have Andrew Dawkins. That'd be interesting to see what he does. Well, I can see lots of things, but mainly drinks tea. Yeah, true. Um, Andrew is obviously the man in charge. So he's the one managing all your money and making all the recommendations to all the clients and knows everything there is to know about finance. <laughs> anything else you want to chip in, Andrew? <laughs> <laughs> Just that, that's all you do. <laughs> that's, that's about it, isn't it? We have myself, Rachel Blackhall, and I'm in charge of compliance. So mostly spend my days researching, doing fund analysis, report writing, all the work behind the scenes, behind the computer, where Andrew is the face to all the clients. I think you're also in charge of me, that's what we say. <laughs> I try. <laughs> Special carer. <laughs> we have Stacey, who works alongside me, and she helps with research on the compliance side and um, yep fund research getting all the pension information together and um, report writing amongst other things we have Alison who deals with all of our administration so she's getting information from the product providers anybody who's looking to make any withdrawals you speak to Alison I'm sure actually probably all of our clients have at one point or another spoken to Alison normally the first to answer the phone <laughs> And then we also have Dan, Sunday named Daniel, who's in charge of our sales and marketing. Dan puts together all of our videos, which we'll be showing you today, um, social media posts and newsletters, things like that. So everything that we send out to our clients, normally Dan has put together. Um, most of our newer clients will probably have met Dan already online, of course. Um, so Dan normally takes through the newer clients getting the ball rolling to come on board. Anything I've missed, Andrew? I, I think that's everybody. We have a cleaning team as well, but we won't mention that just yet. <laughs> that uh, could be overkill, yes. yes. Uh, so next. Next up. Well, those of you who've been with us for a wee while will probably uh, recognise some of the changes here that we've had. So uh, a number of years ago when we were doing investment portfolios, we started off you know, putting a lot of business with uh, Scandia. And uh, no relation to the truck manufacturer, but from that neck of the woods. 
Uh, Scandia morphed then into Old Mutual, Old Mutual, they're a South African company enlisted on the UK stock market for as long as the UK stock market's been in existence. So a mighty fine company, but they decided Scandia was a bit old hat and we would go by their global brand, which is Old Mutual. However, now they've obviously got a bit more money in the bank and wanted to get rid of that marketing budget. So they decided to change the name again, bless them. So they're now Quilter. So when you see your statements coming through, etc., and when we mention them in your reviews, it's Scandia or Mutual Quilter. Crikey. It's all the same. <laughs> yeah. Um, so no need to take any action on that. The only thing will be when we're making payments into Quilter investments, pensions, etc., we might need to just check some of the bank details and the check pay e details as well. Um, so speaking about what's in a name. And we will hand the reins over to Caroline to talk all about Standard Life. Hi, um, morning everybody and a warm welcome from me. Um, as I was introduced, my name is Caroline Miller and I lead the um, Standard Life soon to be Aberdeen um, sales function across um, all of the UK. And today it's my pleasure to share with you a story of a company that has an incredible um, two years, uh, 200 year history of continuously improving learning and adapting to earn its place in the future. Um, it's a company that I'm proud to be a colleague of, and I know many of you on the phone today will be policyholders in and possibly even shareholders in. It's a company that ERD trusts us um, with their most valuable clients, and so we all have a very vested interest in the future success of this 200-year-old business. So I wanted to take you on what I think is a really interesting whistle-stop tour of how we, we got to where we are today. I'm going to start back at our roots. Many of you know that we were established in 1825. Um, the Life Assurance Company of Scotland, established by a number of young, enterprising young men who identified an increasing desire from wealthy landowners to ensure their lives and their families against any financial ruin on their death. Our first client, actually we still have his policy details um, in one of our offices in Glasgow, uh, Edinburgh, sorry, uh, Mr Alexander H Simpson. He was a Paisley merchant, he was aged 38 and he was insured for a sum of £1,500 um, with profits policy, a single payment of £670. Now, when the claim arose in 1866, the bonus in some of assured came to a staggering £3,982. So PO illustrates that the company had somewhat generous terms um, in its very early years. You wouldn't get that today, but we are still generous. Um, now, um, not all clients were as lucky as Mr Alexander Simpson and ensuring the wealthy and the aristocracy was definitely hazardous. Um, when the Earl of Mar suddenly died two years into taking out a £7,000 policy, foul play was called. Um, thinking the death seemed unusual, the claim was actually refused on the grounds of the Earl's three gram a day opium habit, which he did not disclose at the time. Something today we now know as disclosure. Now, through the late 1820s and into the 30s, the company was doing... Oh, did he get his money, though? He didn't get his money, unfortunately, <laughs> no. Or rather, his, his wife didn't get any money. Um, as we moved into the early 30s, the company, um, it did have a few problems and it did lack what we would call dynamic leadership. And that led to a succession of disappointing results. So in uh, so 1831, plans were drawn up for the launch of a new company. And that company was to be called Standard Life. Now, what is a Standard Life, I hear you ask? A standard life um, defined by oh, us. Yeah, I just whispered it. <laughs> <laughs> is a healthy adult living in the UK with temperate habits and a secure occupation free from hazard. So, line tamers, you could look elsewhere. Um, now, signalling a new change in direction with a new name, the company went from strength to strength. It actually marched down into England and then globally into far fetched regions of Jamaica, Australia, um, Canada, and the Far East. Um, and the firm started to also evolve, establishing the first ever group pension scheme, not only in the UK, but actually globally. Mm -hmm. ah, That's interesting. I know. Key, key interesting facts. We delve into the history. So it was at the request of a Manchester inspector for his brother-in-law's company known as Imperial Chemical Industries, so ICI. So it was one of the first group pension schemes lodged in the world, and it was followed by many, many more. The retirement at that time from active work, that was definitely a novel concept and another example of how Standard Life was very much ahead of its time. Unfortunately then, World War 
one broke out with a number of actually brave employees from Standard Life and their sons um, who went to serve on the front line. Now, a key person at the time uh, was their CEO, Leonard Dixon, an incredible, ma incredible man who is fondly remembered for actually continuing to play those soldiers' wages as they were in battle and putting on entertainment for them when they came back. He also wrote to them quite regularly just to keep their spirits up. Now, um, he showed himself wanting to do the very best of the com for the company and its colleagues. And Leonard brought about um, Standard Life into the 20th century. And in 1938, all sorts of records was tumbling. Now, unfortunately, he did have an untimely death. Um, he was actually at um, a loan rally and on his way home, he um, was actually knocked down and fatally killed by a runaway horse on none other than George Street. So we lost this incredibly shrewd businessman um, far too early. But we, you know, he set us up for success. He brought about UK with Profits Endowment Scheme, family income benefits and same rates for men and women, which was incredible. So he and left. Did, and did the company pay out on his death? Uh, hopefully they did. <laughs> hopefully they had some sort of key man insurance on um, Leonard Dixon. Um, so from there, as I said, he set us up for success. We drove um, the business forward. We became the largest life insurance company in Scotland by 1950s. Um, and then as we went into the 60s, everybody knows home ownership absolutely rocketed and Standard Life was there for the very fine people of the UK offering UK mortgages and also mortgage protection. And, and that helped the business um, continue to grow. And then in the 20th century, we expanded from annuities and basic types of insurance that you have into more group pensions, savings and investments. And really, it was just a signal that we never stopped working hard to better the future of our customers. And by 1990s, we were actually Europe's largest mutual company. Now, in the late 90s, the structure of the company that, um, sorry, in the late 90s, we had been considering the structure of a company that would serve the investment needs of both the business and the clients. And Standard Life Investments was born under the motto of um, profit from our knowledge. Um, you'll see the um, details and the logo on the, uh, the slides there. And then in 2006, the company was actually floated on the London Stock Exchange. Andrew, you're going to like this because someone, one of our CEOs, Alexander Scott Bell, a fellow central belter from Falkirk, where I am today, <laughs> had fought very, very hard to stop the, um, uh, the demutualisation of the business when he was CEO of the company. Company, but unfortunately that went ahead. Now something else um, quite exciting happened in 2006. Now no I'm not making reference to Daniel Craig's first outing um, as James <laughs> Bond. Um, it was actually the launch of the Standard Life Wrap platform which I imagine many of the clients on the call today um, benefit from. This was in a really exciting um, move launching a brand new way of looking at and executing um, financial planning futures for, for clients. It was massively transformative in the market at the time and it was a completely different mindset and it's something that we still actually champion today. So 2021 actually signals the 15th birthday of the Standard Life Wrap platform. Did you bring a cake? I did, I did bring a cake for tea <laughs> afterwards. Yes, Excellent. some cupcakes. So all plants make a, only a, a queue outside the building. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, so we've done incredibly well. And today, um, just to give you some facts, because I think this always helps, we support just over 420,000 clients. They're not all ours. They're not all yours. Um, a lot of them are yours, the very best ones. Um, we have just under 3,000 advisor firms that we also support. And we have teams answering a staggered 33,000 calls from clients per month. We process over 1.6 billion trades and we also complete a million transfer requests, um, a service requests each year. Massive company. So we have uh, been through a huge amount in those last 200 years. Um, I've given you that whistle stop tour. Um, and we have bought businesses, we've merged with other businesses, we've definitely been um, pioneers and we're now a Goliath um, in the investment industry. Um, we are also, um, as Andrew alluded to at the start, we're the newest name on the London Stock Exchange with our recently announced rebrand to, not Aberdeen, but Aberdeen. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll cover that off in a, a minute. Um, it still makes me giggle. Um, but I just want to pause because I, I do wonder and reflect on how different were the challenges of the past to the challenges that we, we have today. Um, and I think the answer is not many because, you know, the world moves on, people's needs and, and uh, clients' needs change. 
Um, and we've constantly kept up and, as I say, pioneered for over the last 200 years. And we need to be relevant to um, your clients today. But we also need to continue to pioneer your futures, uh, your um, needs of the future. And we've also we've always had this futuristic mindset. And that's a word that our new chief executive um, uses quite often, actually. So um, let me pause and I'll start to talk to you about what's coming up in terms of shaping our future. And I get to go back to the brand. Now, I had an emotional reaction like probably most of you did when I saw the rebrand. <laughs> I, 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 I did. I had to, um, yeah, I had to really think exactly how I was going to position that. It, it was violent. It was not. <laughs> and then I laughed at all the memes. I thought they were absolutely hilarious. Um, but then um, I took a bit of time because, you know, the decision has been made. And whether you like it or you loathe it, um, it's here and it's here to stay. But I took some time really just to understand and here's where, where I'm at. So companies change their brand and their persona all the time. And we see it in everyday walk of life. Um, and a change of logo and a change of colour palette means absolutely nothing if the business doesn't change underneath or react um, underneath. And the truth is that these brands are actually probably more often about the people that lead the business and also work in the business. Um, it's something that motivates the business and it commits our people to the organisation. And we've had, um, I think we currently stand at five brands at the minute. So it's, it's definitely a change of culture and a definitely a, a, a way of working. And it's one that doesn't forget that rich history that I've I've talked through, that history of constantly surviving and, and innovating and moving forward. But it allows us to take this massive big leap into the future. Um, and the future is exciting. There's a lot to look forward to. And I'm going to show you uh, with you a couple of things. Um, but yeah, really excited. So today I absolutely stand behind the new brand. I've got my laughing out the way. Um, what it does for me personally as a colleague at Standard Life, it allows me or powers me to do much more for ERD, clients um, of, of ERD and the, the wider UK. It's my license to be more modern in my approach, um, really forward thinking, challenge, but innovate on your behalf. So um, really proud to, to, to be part of the new brand. Um, in terms of what else is happening, because the rebrand is one and the culture um, is you know a key part of that but physically um, we have focused quite heavily in the last couple of years on client experience and you'll see the quote on the screen there that our CEO says that delivering value for you know our customers and clients is our true north and the thing that we know you value the most is exceptional client experience and in a world with Google and Airbnb and digital and everything's instant and you know accessible. Client experience is, is so important to build loyalty, advocacy, and also long-term relationships. Now we know that you know yourself and, and ERD, you come to us because you know we have we're there to help you, give you our expertise. But if we do that in a way that isn't convenient, isn't easy and, and relevant to you, then that's you know that that's that's a bit of a deal breaker. So we're making the single biggest investment in our digital capability in 2021. It's very exciting. We're actually partnering with Amazon. Yes, Amazon, where we all got our spiral, <laughs> spiralizers when we were in lockdown, to install a brand new state of the art digital um, and telephony system. Now, it's called Amazon Connect, and it was a system that Amazon, they looked around the market and they just couldn't find the right and the best technology to power their contact center. Um, unfortunately, BT just didn't cut it, so they actually built their own. Now, we're going to bring this breaking, uh, groundbreaking technology into the business, and it will power all of the engagement that you will have with us. Um, it will recognise you when you call us. It will preempt your needs so that we can route you to the best and most appropriate person to deal with your inquiry. It will do it more quickly, more efficiently, and it means that we can deal with your requests, you know, much, much more efficiently and effectively. And we'll have a lot more data on you to help support that conversation. Um, and essentially, the way I describe it is we're taking something that is a much more far complicated transaction and relationship than just buying a, a sweater or a book on Amazon. Um, but actually giving you that retail experience. So all the complex needs you have within your financial planning, we'll give you that retail experience. And, um, you know, no other company is out there in the market doing that. So it's, it's quite, you know, pioneering in itself. Um, alongside that, you'll see um, some logos on the screen there. Um, FNZ, you don't really need to know who FNZ are, but essentially they're the technology that underpins um, all of the, 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 the platform and the wrap technology that, that powers your financial planning. We've completed um, a complete redesign of wrap for its 15th birthday. It's massively exciting. Um, 
it is a little bit out of date, let's be honest. Um, and this new look and much more simpler intuitive navigation is, is amazing. Uh, we also offer first class client reporting. So you'll get to see that no doubt very, very soon and a host of new online journeys. So we're actually pushing much more onto uh, less paper and onto to digital. So it'll create an incredible oh, that's that's experience. That's one of the things that I think we do get a lot of feedback from clients saying, why do we get so many sheets of keep paper? Saying so that you don't. And, yeah. yeah, we don't want mail. We don't, you know, everything really should be digital and also um, secure as well. So I just wanted to put that into context because at the minute we get 500,000 calls a year from and as advisors and from clients who phone us up for um, you know lots of different reasons, but this new technology will remove between 50 and 70 percent of that because we'll enhance the system to do that for you um, or we'll create a digital alternative. <clears throat> so this means that in terms of experience, less errors, much quicker processing of um, requests as same work into retail and much more time back to focus on you know, your lives or um, from ARD's perspective, the things that, you know, you want to do, which is, is help your clients prosper. Um, so, yeah, so that that's that's a huge move forward for us and um, really, really excited. That should be coming um, probably in Q3 this year. Um, and no doubt you'll get to, to see the benefits of that very, very soon. Now, uh, just to kind of close, I don't want to overplay, but I kind of do want to overplay how transformative both of these enhancements are. And um, we've been working on them for several years. Um, but not only do they allow us to significantly enhance that experience, and we know that's what you value the most, well, one of the things you value the most, um, but it also creates that future for us to continually build and innovate on your behalf so that as a client of Standard Life, you will always get the best of what we can offer, you know, the most relevant, the most innovative, um, the most recent. And beyond 2021, do expect much more from Aberdeen. There is lots more innovation on your behalf. We're looking at different products. We're looking at different technologies that we can support, um, you know, your, your prosper with your financial futures. Um, and uh, no, no doubt ARD will, will um, uh, bring those to you as and when. But as I say, lots more to come. So this is the um, the next chapter in the 200 history of Standard Life. And just wanted to close by, with a quote that um, was actually my manager at the time. And I just thought it was really, really quite interesting. One thing for sure, Standard Life is a company that has been here long before us. And it will be a company that will be here long after we are gone. Slightly morbid, but it shows you the true strength of the organisation. Um, thank you for listening. I hope you found that um, useful. I certainly actually really enjoyed looking into more of the history of Standard Life. I'm happy to pass over if there's any um, questions that might have come through. That's great. I think we'll catch up on all the questions at the okay. end. Now, I believe you have a video, short video to play. Yes, forgive me. Sorry. Um, yes, I wanted to show you a bit of a video. We have the Aberdeen um, rebrand that's going to come later on in the year. But I wanted to give you just a wee bit of a sense of um, the kind of a feel um, and a, a bit of a tone of what the future is going to look like. So hopefully you'll enjoy, enjoy the short video. It's only two minutes long. Um, Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. market has, uh, well, actually for the second month in a row, uh, UK smaller funds that we operate have uh, outperformed all the other sectors. And it actually is now, is the first time in a long while that UK smaller companies are now the, the leading sector for all the markets over all time periods. So over the last few months, years, 
and, uh, and well, not decades, but uh, over the last 10 years anyway, outperforming America. Uh, thanks really to the uh, to the effects of Brexit, where we had market underperformance, and then we got Brexit sorted out. Well, mostly there's still the financial services sector to, to take care of, but there's a lot of money now coming back into the UK from around the world, where they're saying, right, well, the UK economy is doing well, uh, backed by a great rollout of the vaccines, which is having uh, enormous effects, so one of the best uh, rollouts in the world, and uh, confidence is booming. So despite what the BBC predicted months ago, the UK is open and it's doing tremendously well. One of the best performing sectors, as we're saying, in the world at the moment. We increased our exposure to, to UK equities uh, a number of years ago following Brexit and it's starting to bear fruit now. So, uh, so well done for everybody for sticking to it. Uh, the yeah. US then. Oh, sorry. Can I, can I just oh, interrupt wanna... quickly? Sorry. <laughs> sorry, so what uh, I was doing is over each um, area of the world, when you're discussing what's going on, I thought I'd look at the contributors and where some of this growth has been generated from, especially within our funds. I wish we'd, we'd practice this before. <laughs> so <laughs> we have in the UK, believe it or not, I know it's Domino's Pizza, um, but... This is one of the companies within our UK fund which has performed exceptionally well just over the recent recent months, um, actually up 13%. So Domino's, which really hasn't been affected by the pandemic as many other companies have, um, their trading has been exceptional and they've actually said that the new year period, so the first quarter of this year, delivers, delivered its highest ever weekly sales figure. Um, like yeah, yeah, pun intended. <laughs> and it's also recently announced the disposals of operations in Sweden and Iceland to further consolidate focus on the UK market. So company that's been doing very well and hopefully it will continue to contribute to the UK growth. Oh, it's something very expensive. They are a bit, yeah, but it's one of those things if you order a lot, you save money. You need to spend a lot to save some. Okay. Perverted logic, but probably because of the fact that they charge so much, they're making so much in profit. Well, exactly. Well. I imagine there's a lot of profit in pizza. Uh, yeah, cheese on toast, basically, isn't it? <laughs> basically. Uh, now right. you can go on about the US. Shall I? Okay, thank you very much for that. Uh, so the US, well, funny, it's actually been uh, for the for the US funds that we've got, it's actually been a negative month. So that's the first time in ages we've seen that. I think uh, a lot of this is down to the to the big Fang stock, uh, not not necessarily underperforming, but not performing as sparklingly as they did last year at the beginning of this, as investors seek new opportunities for short term growth. So. Um, a little bit down on the on the month, but overall, obviously, over time periods of one year, three year, five years, ten years, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, the US has delivered sparkling returns, really, really good. Stimulus packages continue to be to be rolled out. Uh, I just at the moment they're debating about how many trillion dollars they're going to pump into the economy. So the two political parties need to get to, together and decide how much is going to be in there. The Federal Reserve, who are in charge of the money supply, don't seem to be too bothered about the prospect of inflation coming along later in the year and uh, continuing with their engagement in, in pumping all this money out. Vaccine growth has been uh, sparkling. Uh, simply because of the fact that their huge buying power means that they've taken up the, the bulk of the share of uh, world products in that area. So it's done very, very well. Big thing on the, on the that's still the fly in the ointment is the disputes with the various nations around the world, especially China. And uh, Biden seems to be having the same success that Trump did in, in, in sort of trying to ease these tensions. There doesn't seem to be any end in sight for that. But um, that's the sort of uh, the negative side of things. But uh, no doubt uh, something will happen at some stage on that. So, yeah, the US fund um, is one fund that differs from all the others in our portfolio in that it actually <laughs> tracks the index, the Standard & Poor's Total Market Index. So this index comprises of large, mid, small, and microcap companies in the, U the US. So the index itself has over three and a half thousand companies in it. And the big players there you'll see on the screen are Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, Tesla, and they've largely contributed to the excellent growth that we've seen in the past. So big players, names that you already know, and I'm sure it will, it will return. Good. What was we moving on to next? We have Europe next. Oh, we didn't. Thank you for that. Kara, uh, <laughs> sorry, Europe's, Europe's been a, a good one. Again, a positive month this uh, this month. It's been really, I think, a steady eddy, although it's been probably been fairly spectacular, but uh, steady eddy in terms of the, the funds that we have under our belt, delivering good, uh, good returns over all time periods. 
Um, vaccine rollout, well, it's, it's sort of mixed, but uh, seems to be going in the right direction. Those economies that are particularly sensitive to tourism, they're hoping that the, the vaccine rollout and the, the relaxation of travel restrictions will be, be good news for them. So uh, here's, here's to that and uh, being able to go away and do things that we, we got used to from before. Um, the, the, green, the Green Deal, the, the EU's attempt to pump billions if not trillions of euros into the market to stimulate economies is starting to, to take shape now and a number of the companies that we invest in will be beneficiaries of this so, so Europe is actually doing very very well for us as a portfolio and we're pleased to include it and it should be quite positive for, for us and our clients going forward. And one of the largest holdings within our European fund is Arielx. so people who have tuned in before will no doubt have seen this name we have touched on it in a little bit about what they do but um, just to remind you they are a multinational information and analytics company and um, so what they're doing at the moment is they've teamed up with medical scientists and professionals in India to help with the current COVID-19 crisis over there especially and um, they've set up support groups to help families in various regions they have a team providing verified information relating to the medicines hospital beds and the provision of oxygen so many of the hospitals out in India have actually run out of oxygen. So together, RELX and the partners that are based out in there, they've made a donation of 22 high flow oxygen concentrators, which is supporting over 12,000 patients with the illness. So they're, they're really doing a lot of good work out there and having that information and data to help is doing great work. Yeah, I think hats off to RELX and all the, the work they've done over the last, last year, similar to, to uh, AstraZeneca and their, their vaccine rollout, which is uh, the not-for-profit. So, uh, good to them. Absolutely. Um, Over to the Far East. Over to the Far East. Well, yeah, it's been a fairly underwhelming month for our Far East funds. Um, yeah, fairly, fairly flat growth, really. A lot of com countries such as uh, tai Taiwan doing really, really well for the, uh, the, the, the technology stock. Uh, world shortage of uh, semiconductors and various other manufacturing chip components and things like that. Too technical for me, but <laughs> they, they benefit on that. There's other parts of the, the, the area, though, Japan and Thailand, who are seeing a resurgence of COVID, and that's hampering growth. So, But the Far East as a long-term market has got to be the, the place where it's at because the, the population is getting richer, they're, they're, they're buying more quality products, they're importing, but they're also trading between themselves and uh, it's an area that we want to be involved in as you know we increased our exposure to the far east a couple of years ago and that's benefiting the the, the fund portfolio enormously do, do you have do you have a story from i the do east? i do i did manage to pick something so we, we like good news stories not not to be doom and gloom so as andrew mentioned yeah this sector it might suffer over the short term due to spikes in covid cases but one of the companies who's uh, a newer holding in this fund is Dr. Reddy's Laboratories. Have they got anything to do with those big nappies I like? No, it's a different oh. company completely. <laughs> they are part of a limited pilot and the soft launch of the Sputnik V vaccine in India, which we have heard on the news previously, um, it was used for the Brazilian variant. So that has now landed in India. So as I said, it was this vaccine was developed in Moscow, um, but it has now been rolled out in India um, in an attempt to try and stop the spread of the virus over there. So we do hope to see this improve that part of the world. Yeah. So actually, uh, what's, the, what's the next? Thing? We have property. Property. Well, yeah, yeah. Nothing, nothing too exciting to report here. So well, oh, I don't know. Do I say anything about this? Well, that's, yeah. When I've looked into it, that's what I thought as well. There's not really any exciting stories to tell on property right now. There's, there's not been much movement. Um, so I don't think there's much need to cover old ground. And when there is something to cover we'll we'll let you know yeah good 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 yeah we'll, we'll move on again <laughs> quickly we have fixed interest fixed interest are the most exciting sector of the whole oh, uh, your notes uh, differ to mine <laughs> yeah <laughs> i was at a seminar on this uh, a couple of weeks ago and i must admit nodding off a few times uh, so fixed interest as we know before we've kept hammering on about this just a couple of posh words for debt so lending money to the companies and governments both here in the uk and overseas Big fear you've got is inflation because if you're lending money to a company or a government and you're getting a 1% return, that's fine. If inflation's at half a percent, you're making a margin, you're making a profit. If inflation goes above 1%, you're making a loss and therefore the fixed interest return becomes negative and you don't really want to hold that. 
And uh, we're seeing at the moment then that a lot of the fixed interest funds are repositioning because of the fear of inflation later on in this year and into next year and trying to sell off those assets that will be badly affected. So we've seen negative returns for a number of the funds. And this is why we've been hammering on for the last few months about yeah. people that uh, are wanting to take less risk than fixed interest is perhaps uh, an area that we should just cut down on in terms of size and uh, concentrate more on the equity and the property side because that will give us more of a balanced approach. But we mustn't forget yeah. that fixed interest has been a great friend of ours for the, well, for the last 30 odd years and has delivered spanking returns, uh, you know, sort of bigly out, out, <laughs> uh, outpacing what we would normally expect. Uh, I've got that word in again. <laughs> Good. Are you <laughs> Just you know it's a real one, a real yeah, word. I'm, I'm excited about bigly. Uh, so yeah, fi fixed fixed interest underperforming this this month and uh, probably has been for, for most of the year. Still a good good uh, position to hold though, so don't be too frightened if we do have fixed interest uh, holdings. And those parts of the fixed interest market that are inflation protected will do well, and those will be the shares that will be in demand. But um, probably a little bit of a ch choppy ride for fixed interest for the next year or two. Yeah, absolutely. It's different to the equity sectors in that we, we can't really talk about any particular share purchases and how a company has evolved and things. So it can be seen as a little bit well, dull, <laughs> but absolutely, you know, combine it with, with all other sectors. And, and that's how we create the right balance um, across the world to get the right attitude to risk for our clients and our portfolios. It, it really is a, a valuable component. Um, but we just oh, have to oh, adapt. Look at the graphic there. Uh, <laughs> Some, somebody mixing some nice cocktails. Somebody knows Andrew well. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. So that really brings us to the conclusion. Anything you have to add, Andrew? Well, as, Bring as it all we've, together. As we've been saying ever since uh, Brexit referendum came out, it's it's a great time to be invested. It really is, and the, the next week one is going to be fantastic in terms of returns. Simply because of the fact that all around the world, people have got cash uh, in the bank that really does nothing for an economy because until it's spent, it's creating no wealth for anybody. Once that money's spent, it uh, releases taxes, it creates employment, it creates wealth, and uh, it does really, really well for, for not only for uh, governments and people at large, but also investors. We, we're fully into that. We're fully invested. The stock we hold should really uh, do superbly well over the next three and five years but we always do because there may be companies and there may be assets to avoid and we avoid them and there's other companies and assets that make money whether times are good or bad so investing is always good never a bad time to invest and always a good time to invest with us <laughs> get that plug in there excellent right so well the plan is to try and play the video of our portfolios and try and look for it through the questions so we'll do that while this video plays
believe that one worked this time round. Um, we have a few questions. Hang on, wait a minute, for those people that are pre-recording this on the YouTubes and want us, that the Yeah, they all, they all work, they all work. <laughs> we never have a glitch. Right. <laughs> Professionals. Start, start again, let's, let's, let's start at the top. Andrew, sorry, it's YouTube, not YouTubes. <laughs> Is it? Yes. Have you heard of Zumba? Yes. <laughs> Andrew calls it not Z Zumba, Zumba, not Zoom. Ah, yes. <laughs> So we have, right, question for yourself, Caroline. Yes, sure. When will we see more about the rebranding to Yes, so Aberdeen. you will, so you've had a, a bit of a glimpse. You've, you've seen the monochrome dotty um, glimpse. And the of, video. Of, and, and the video, <laughs> um, which is, is pretty awesome. Um, I enjoyed watching that earlier. Um, you will see a lot more, probably about October time, where we will move fully into the rebrand. So we... Um, are now part of the stock exchange as I've said so we had to kind of come to market quite early but with that to make sure that we had everything set up um, so you'll see a bit more of a fanfare and um, what you see seeing is a monochrome we have different parts of the business we'll take on different colour palettes so Ooh. I probably will get sacked for telling you this but the <laughs> Style Life wrap will take on more of a green hue and tone which actually is quite nice I like green yeah. I've always worked for companies that have had blue and yellow, so green's a nice <laughs> change. Um, so, yeah, so you'll see a lot more from, from us um, through then. And actually, I think it would be a great time, probably, if I'm allowed to come back and tell you a little bit more about the future plans. Um, but well, you're... Not much of that. But okay, we get to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we'll be able to share with you more about, you know, what our new literature is going to look like, what our offices are going to look like, because they're getting a bit of a change as well, how the brand is going to be in our... our um, our offices but also how we're going to be using that and how you'll see it as a client out and about on bus stops and you know cars and cabs and things like that so yeah so hmm. watch out for October very exciting so, well speaking about that are you talking about the, the office thinking etc. about something yeah well, you, you're thinking the same thing I was thinking uh, probably not but <laughs> <laughs> What I was thinking is, um, Standard Life obviously have big head offices mm -hmm. in the city centres and things at the moment. Are a lot of staff at home and are there plans for them to come back or yeah. what changes are um, Standard Life looking to make? No, yeah. that, wasn't, that wasn't the question I was thinking. <laughs> I'm, I'm not surprised. I've got two questions then. So to answer that question, yeah, we, look, we've always had to balance our co well-being and you know particularly through lockdown where people have had families and caring responsibilities so we moved everybody really really swiftly back into to the home and um, that's worked really really well we felt that we've been much more productive as an organization mm -hmm. I'll be honest we've probably fast forwarded all our digital plans around yeah. zoom and YouTube and zoom back. <laughs> zoom back. Um, you know the plans that we had for three years hence you know we, we pretty much did last year so we're in a really really strong place to accommodate much more flexibility working and um, which means that we'll probably use our offices more as touchdown points and as an you know a place for people That's to what? touch down points it's maybe a corporate <laughs> chat but blue you, sky thinking yeah outside the box yeah up north uh, yeah we're, we'll use so them. talking about north as well yeah what yeah. did that mean well, I look after the north region of, of the oh, UK, north, yeah, yeah. which is pretty much most of England and Scotland. But yeah, we'll have um, a lot nicer furniture that allows more collaborative um, kind of touchdown points. So instead of it all just being rows of horrible desks and you know, like a, a rabbit desks. warren. We, oh, they're not yeah, horrible, I'm sure. Know, it, it does look like a call centre. Um, we'll have much you know, nicer visuals and nicer places to sit and have a cup of coffee and really just actually have a nice, happier, more constructive environment for our colleagues to work in. Right. So does that mean uh, our clients home. can look forward to increased fees? No, not at all actually, <laughs> less fees. But you'll also get the opportunity to come in as well, so we'll open the doors to oh, you, know, you guys as, oh, as well. Yeah. But no, to be honest, we did need a bit of a revamp. So I think um, much more productive colleagues as a result of this. Very good. And so what was your question then, since it wasn't that? <laughs> no, I, 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 don't know. I don't know where I'm going with that. Uh, what, what does it feel like being a, a colleague working at Standard Life? A, a question has come in there from George. That didn't yeah. sound like you, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> George in Men's Street. <laughs> yeah, it's, no, it's a real place, Men's Street. Uh, no, I, I believe it's, it is, yeah. It's the home of, um, what's that spirit called? I don't know what, yeah. in, uh, that'll come back to me in a minute. There's a big uh, chemical factory there, and they make Malibu. Oh, there, so. actually, that's my favourite tipple. I had the Malibu yeah. last night. So, so it's not, not made in Bermuda by Bahamas, no, it's think made it in Bahamas. Main Street. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we never get that. I know this weekend. <laughs> um, yeah, so being a colleague in Standard Life is um, it's quite incredible, actually. Um, I, I've always said to colleagues, particularly when I'm recruiting 
people that I'm a manager, I always say, look, there's no other company that I would want to work for. And I truly believe in that. I've got a huge amount of passion. I think it is... It could be, it could be the agile you might want to work for an agile. It could be, it could be, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But there's just that rich history and, you know, the, you know, Stella Life is part of the Edinburgh landscape. You know, it's just an incredible company. And, you know, the company is very much about co-creation and doing the right thing. You know, we put our clients at the centre. Um, and as I said before, the rebirth for me is this license to just, you know, go further and do better and do more. And, you know, it's 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 just a, an amazing place to work. And I think sometimes in this industry, I know like we're not the NHS and we're not, you know, doctors, but we're quite a noble profession as well. You know, we help clients that are on the call today. We we take their massively hard earned unless, money. Unless you take money. No, that's true. But we take their hard earned money, we help them keep it safe, we help them grow it, and then we give it back to them when they need it the most. And I love that I do that for clients. And, and you'll be the same. And hopefully yeah. we give them back lots more than they they, they, need, <laughs> they wanted, or not that they wanted, but they thought they would have. So, yeah, love the industry. And, you know, Stand Life is just an incredible force in the industry um, there for our clients. So, for me, awesome place to work. Absolutely, that's great. Yeah, fabulous. I don't think we can add any more to that, can we? I don't think so. No, Caroline, it's been it's been a pleasure catching up with you. Well, I don't think we're going to do that. We've had a question about independence, but we, we we're not going to go there. We won't put Caroline through that. <laughs> <laughs> and you say, don't you need to see about it? Oh, no, no, we, we, <laughs> Rewind, re rewind to the next to the last uh, webinars. Um, we, we're gonna we're gonna put the webinar up webinars on when there's something uh, decent to chat about. So they're yeah. not they're not monthly anymore. But whenever we had something to talk about, but we really uh, would like your help. Please, at the end of this, give, give us some feedback. Let us know what you like, uh, yeah. in what you don't like. Absolutely, you yes. You don't like these webinars, in which case <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to tune in. But hopefully, let, let us know True. if there's anything you'd like to, to hear, if there's anybody you'd like to hear from, if there's any of the financial experts that, that, that catch your fancy, then we may be able to get them to come in and have a chat to, to, to us all. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Any, any topics at all. So thank you once again for tuning in, um, and we'll speak to you all soon. Look forward to that. Thanks. Thanks.